I feel so sad. Money drugs and Hello guys! So today I'm going to be showing you how to make a three panel CD jacket. The tutorial is actually split in two parts because I'm going to be showing you how to make one with just the design and another one with plastic inserts that you can get from Amazon where the CD lays. The reason why they're separate is because the dimension from one another are not the same. So there is a difference and that's why I'm splitting the video in two. The project is great for making deluxe versions of your album, soundtrack, CDs, etc. Because you can have two CDs or a CD and a DVD. If you make this for a loved one, you can put a CD with a mixtape and a DVD with a home video. That would be really cool. And in the middle, a booklet explaining everything. The steps are somewhat similar to my original CD jacket tutorial. So I'm going to leave those resources in the description as well as a playlist with all of my videos regarding musical packaging. All right, enough talking, let's get started. Start by going into the description of this video and click on the link that I have left there. Once the link opens, you'll see my OneDrive folder with three folders in it. Click on the one called Templates. There, you should find the file called 7 3 panel CD jacket digipack with plastic inserts. Download it and open it using Photoshop. You should get this template. The three rectangles at the bottom will end up being, starting from the right, the cover, back cover, and a panel that will go on the inside. The rectangles at the top will be the design on the inside of the CD jacket. If you're wondering why the spines are different sizes, it's because the one on the left only folds over one of the panels, and the one on the right folds over two panels, therefore it needs more room, that's why. Also, notice how there's only one tab at the bottom. This is because since we are using plastic inserts on both of the panels of the sides, we don't need to create envelope type parts to insert the CDs. But if we're going to include the booklet on the middle as it usually is, we need the tab. If you're not going to include a booklet, you can crop the file to eliminate the tab. Before continuing, I wanted to give you a tip. You might have noticed that this time I did not include the files of each element separate so that you can design each portion of the digipack. That's because I found the files redundant and unlike the other digipack, all the panels of this digipack have slightly different measurements. Instead, what you can do is select the cropping tool and crop each of the sections of the digipack. Design whatever will end up there, then saving the images as high resolution JPEG and then stepping backwards to restore the file to its original form and repeating this as many times as you need. Once you have designed the elements of your digipack, you can put them together in the file we downloaded at the beginning. Don't forget to color in the tab or extend the picture for better results. Go back into the description of this video and click on the link. Once the link opens, click on the folder called Paper Size and download the file called 13 by 19. Once you downloaded it, open it using Photoshop. Copy and paste your digipack design on the paper size. It should place itself in the middle with the correct size and print it onto whatever paper you have available. If you don't have 13 by 19 inches paper size, you can do what I showed you on my digipack tutorial in where you divide the files into different sheets of A4 sheets of paper, printing it and then gluing it back together. However, I have access to a printer center that has the ability to print in this dimensions, and the results are pretty close to being professional. So if you have a printer center or your printer can hold this size of sheets of paper, I would recommend you to do that instead. Once you have the file printed, it should look something like this. I'm going to cover my design with contact paper to protect the image. Continue by cutting the image out, including the negatives we do not need. Once the figure is cut, mark the folds. You do not need to mark the folds, you can just fold them. However, that gives a very amateur looking result, so I will definitely recommend you to mark them. Once the folds are marked, let's fold them in place and it should look something like this. Here, you can see that I forgot to include a tab, so I added a piece of cardstock with some tape to extend the image. It's not ideal, but it's a good solution. We continue by gluing the flap on the middle in place. This time I'm using hot glue since I ran out of double-sided tape and hot glue does the trick. With the two side panels, as I mentioned earlier, since the CDs go on top of the plastic inserts, we glue the outside to the inside like so. I use spray adhesive to join them together. It should look something like this. Now we get the plastic insert that we bought for this project. I actually got mine from a CD on clearance at Walmart for $1. The CD was a compilation of greatest summer hits no one wanted. I removed the plastic inserts to use them in this project. 
If you cannot find a CD like this at clearance, try to look on a thrift store. Keep an eye open for packaging like this because they actually have a lot of plastic inserts. And don't be shy to straight out from the DVDs as well. However, I'm not going to be using this packaging because this is actually part of our collection. But if you find something like this, you can use them. Or if you cannot find them anywhere, you can also get the inserts at Amazon. To glue them in place, I used some strong hot glue and glue them one by one. And we're done! It should look something like this. And that is it for this video guys. I hope you like it. If you like it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are, thank you so much. Don't forget that you can follow me on my social medias at Crafter Training. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.